Okay, folks, so we're going to go over some simple items that I believe, if I can adjust my camera properly. <laughs> let, me, let me bring that up a bit. It's a little crooked. Ah. There we go. All right. So just some simple items that I believe that anybody can put together for preps that most people wouldn't think of, okay? Um, most people are walking around with things like their, their cell phone, their keys, maybe what's in their purse, and that's it. Um, in my home and in my vehicles, I have pretty much the same basic kits for myself. And my family members each have their own kits that may have some of the same things. They have basically the same essentials. And then they'd have some things that are kind of personal comfort items. But one thing that we're primarily sure of is in, if you want to call it prepping, that's fine. I just call it self-reliance. In a self-reliance situation, you want to be sure that you can carry what you have. Um, and that's the biggest mistake I see with like go bags and bug out bags and get home bags and those types of things. Um, this is primarily my all around bag. Um, when I'm going out in the woods hunting, this comes with me. When I go camping with the kids, this comes with me. Um, when for emergencies, uh, this is on hand, okay? If I'm driving down the road during a snowstorm and there's a tree down and on somebody's home and they need help, um, this bag's with me, okay? Different seasons, it's going to have some different things, but primarily this is for making sure that I can regulate my body temperature, my core body temperature, okay? It's there to make sure that I can hydrate myself. It's there to make sure that I have cover, that I have fire for obviously core body temperature, but also for um, disinfecting water, okay? And it's make sure that I can cut things when I need to and that I can lash things when I need to and so I can find my, my way around personal navigation okay and then we have self-aid items I don't have a first aid what they call first aid in this bag first aid is you're responding to aid that somebody else needs where self-aid is these are the things that will care for me and they may not be enough for everybody else but all my family members have their own self-aid bags but I want to show you a couple uh, unique items that I don't think a lot of people think of before we dig into this bag here. Um, and primarily, this is just so you're okay. Now, one of the first things I use, and you can get these on selfrelianceoutfitters.com, is this little cook stove. It's like the old brass ones, but the difference is it comes with this topper. So when I pull this snuffer lid off, and this is what snuffs out the flame, this is an alcohol stove, um, and this goes on top, so I'm creating distance between my flame and the thing that I'm looking to cook, which is usually water, okay? Um, and it doesn't take very long to get water going in one of these, all right? Luckily, this has a rubber O-ring seal, and when this can cools after I'm done cooking, I can put that on there, and it doesn't leak out of my bag. I can shake it all I want, and it's not going to leak out. And this nice little stove topper goes right back on and they're about 20 or 25 bucks and they're worth it and I've had this one for about five years um, and I use it you can tell by how blackened it is I use it all the time and then I keep a bottle a well sealed bottle of denatured alcohol um, along with it so this is full and this is full when I leave the home um, that way I can always disinfect water that's something that's critical another thing is is a public utility key and you can find these pretty much on Amazon or whatever. This one's kind of fancy. It comes apart and everything into two pieces like this, okay? Well, what this is, this will turn off any gas mains. This will turn on any water. So on the sides of office buildings, a lot of times you'll see that there's a, a metal door with a spigot inside. These are the special keys that will turn those things on. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but during a power outage, a lot of those buildings are still filled with water. Now, I'm not saying going up and stealing somebody's water, but if it's a critical emergency and you need water now, a lot of those buildings pipes will still be filled with water and you can use this to get water from those places. You can also use this to turn off the gas main outside when you need to in case there's uh, a fire or anything like that. Okay, so this basically handles any kind of public utility and emergency door keys and things, all right? So it's just a public utility key. 
Um, this to me is something that you should always have. All right, so you can hang this on the outside of your bag. So I have a carabiner on the outside of my bag and for the urban areas, I would have definitely have one of these on there and I have one of these in the glove compartment of each of my vehicles as well. Um, it's just one of those things that people don't think about. Now, I don't like a lot of things dangling on the outside of my bag, so you want to secure this properly and possibly even keep it in your pocket. Now let's talk about, I'm going to move this camera, I'm not a camera guy, um, what I carry on me all the time. Your first, your first um, form of cover, so what we look for is we're looking for uh, cover. Okay, to regulate thermo body, thermo regulator body temperature, our core body temperature. You're looking for cover. You're looking for um, any type of cordage, things to tie, lash, uh, loop, um, even you know make a tourniquet from. Uh, usually, we're going to be using it for things like running a rain fly or something like that, or some form of shelter, um, or even holding a pot over a fire. You're looking for uh, personal navigation, like a compass. And maps of your area and if you don't have them get topographical maps of your area you can order those online for any custom area you're looking for um, any type of candling device that could be candles that could be a headlamp um, that could be a flashlight um, I'm big on Yuko candles because they burn for a long time and headlamps um, those things are critical to me so with that you'd want batteries extra batteries right but batteries on headlamps can last for a really long time. Um, then you'd want cutting tools. That would be um, a multi-tool. That would be um, a saw, a folding saw. Uh, that would be a knife, a good fixed blade knife. Um, and that could be an ax, depending on your skill levels and things. All right. So if we started with those five, we're in pretty good shape. All right. But then you need containers. You need things to get water, collect water, and you need things to that you can actually um, disinfect water in. So metal, stainless steel is the best. So on my personal self, I'm going to be carrying usually sunglasses or safety glasses. I work around the property a lot. A lot of times I have tinted safety glasses. Um, but sunglasses, your own eyewear, prescription eyewear. Make sure you have your eyewear. Make sure you have a spare set. On my left hip, I always carry some sort of fixed blade knife um, that's carbon steel. That way if I need to, I can cast sparks off of this to get a fire started. Um, and I have what's called a Scandinavian grind. It's a flat grind, it's really wide. It's, it stays extremely sharp and it's easy to sharpen in the field if I need to be away from home. That's always clipped to my side. On my right side, I always have a firearm clipped to me. And that depends on you and your personal life. In my pocket, I always have about 25 to 50 feet of cordage, some kind of cordage. This is Mar Mariner's Bank Line, number 36 Bank Line. I use this a lot for tying up pots over a fire or guy lines for a tent. Uh, it can be used for a lot of different things, but I always have it in my pocket um, because about 50 feet of cordage is going to get me what I want. Um, a lot of people keep about 6 feet of cordage in their pockets because that can be pretty useful for everyday things when you're out and about. Um, the other thing I always keep in my pocket is some sort of fire, and that's usually a lighter, um, a newer Bic lighter, uh, because instant fire, and that's what I want. Um, then I have probably the most expensive item I keep on me is my Leatherman Super Tool 300. There's a reason for it. It has what I want, what I need, and what I. It doesn't have anything I don't need. It has a good pair of pliers with cutters on it that can cut pretty decent wire. Um, it has a regular straight knife that's easy to sharpen and all these lock. It has a file that a lot of people don't think they may need, but you'll find a lot of uses for it. Obviously it has screwdriver and all for punching. If I need to repair my bag with that cordage I have in my pocket, um, I can punch, ream it out with my awl and then I can feed the line through with that same awl because it has a hole in it. This is actually a reamer, not an awl. Um, then on the other side I have a, a, a blade that has um, serrations on it, that's used for cutting rope and things like that, or bandages, you know, seat belts, those kind of things. If somebody's stuck in their car, I can cut their seat belt pretty quick with that. Um, it has a can opener on it. It actually works pretty good, but I'm going to get to something here real quick that you need to know before you go out and about and 
you know, need this stuff. I want you to use it before you need it. So the can opener is just like a Boy Scout can opener. It works really well. Then it has a couple little screwdrivers on it. So just on this one side, and then I have a saw, which is great for cutting up small pieces of wood for firewood, dry wood for firewood. It's a very, very sharp blade. So this one tool is about $89, and it's in my pocket all the time. It's always in my pocket, all right? So even when I'm talking about it, I'll stick it right back in my pocket. So I have a couple different redundancies for cutting tools. I have that multi-tool that also acts as a redundancy. I have cordage with me. I have fire with me. And what I have on me is cover. Now, many times you'll see me traveling with a water bottle, a stainless steel water bottle. Um, I use stainless steel non-insulated, non-vacuum sealed, single wall stainless steel. So if I need to collect water, I can put that right over a fire and it won't crack or explode like an insulated bottle will. So we want single wall stainless steel water bottles. Okay. Usually we want 32 ounce. Um, the reason is is because uh, water disinfectant tablets, like you can get in your regular REI or Cabela's or something like that, um, work on like 24 to 32 ounces. So I don't have to measure anything. All right. So let's get to my bag real quick. Um, so you know what I have. I'll start with just a personal item. This is not necessary. Um, it's what I like to have in my bag. And it's pretty compact and weighs almost nothing. You can find these on Amazon. They're just a full utensil kit. They have metal straws. They have full size silver, silverware in here, stainless steel. They even have chopsticks in here, which uh, you can use for uh, actually skewering meat and putting over a fire. Um, so I'm not out in the woods making, you know, stir fry or anything, but, and it zips up in this nice little case and it slides right into my pack. So it's pretty simple. Another custom item for me, because I'm a little more skilled in the wilderness is I carry a tomahawk with me. Um, the reason is, is because this is a multifunctional cutting tool. I can pull this head off of this handle and I can use it as a shaving tool. I can shave wood with it. I can cut meat with it. I can skin game animals with it. If I'm using it for chopping small pieces of wood, obviously I just put it on the handle and I chop. Um, why I like this is, is because I don't have to know how to reset an axe head on a handle. So if this handle were to break, which this is a pretty heavy walnut, if this handle was to break, um, I can make a new one out there in the wilderness. Um, a lot of times with branches from my yard, I can make a brand new one using the axe head to carve that and my cutting tools, my knives to carve that and I can refit a new handle on there. And then I just slide this off of there and it can pack into my bag pretty securely, pretty neatly, okay? Now this axe is a custom, this Tomahawk's custom one, it's about $200. You don't really need something like that. Um, you can get a um, cold steel Tomahawk from Amazon, um, like one of the Hunter models or something in a range about probably around $25 to $50. Um, but I keep this and I always have a mask on my axe head, a leather mask, so I don't cut myself. Um, mine also has a belt loop fixture that I can hang it on my belt if I need to while I'm moving around and I don't want to carry my bag. Um, one thing nobody in my industry seems to think of, and that's cover for your gear. <laughs> this is a simple rain cover. It slides over my backpack. It keeps most of the weather off of it. I keep this in my pack all the time. What's also nice about this is if I have my camp set up but I need to go do some stuff, it can, it can act as a quick cover for me, but I can also flip it around and I can carry some firewood or berries or kindling or whatever in this thing as well. Um, but for primarily, it's for covering my gear so it doesn't get all soaked and wet. Um, let's get into fire. Like I said, I keep many, many different types of fire with me. Um, the lighter is one. You can use stormproof matches, that's fine. Um, in this case, I have In this case, I have flint and steel and a charred rope in here that I can easily get an ember from so I can blow it into a flame. In this small bag here, I keep another lighter. So if I have another bag, I'm going to keep another lighter in there because two is one and one is none. Um, I keep a lighter and I keep a very large 10 powered magnification lens. This is actually um, a lens from just a, um, an old telescope. Um, you can find these big lenses on Amazon and stuff for a few dollars. Why? If it's sunny out, I can create fire with this. All right, I'm looking to create an ember, not a flame, an ember that I can put into tinder and then I can blow it into flame. All right. 
obviously that's something that takes practice, so that's something you'd want to learn how to do. In my bag I also keep a headlamp and extra batteries. I keep about 50 feet of cordage, and on that cordage I have certain loops and knots that I'll show later on when I do some wilderness stuff. Certain loops or knots that I use regularly, and I keep that, that on a carabiner here. This cordage is pre-tied. It has a bowline knot on one end, it has prussic loops, it has multiple tie-outs for tent stakes. So these are my guy tie-outs for tent stakes. Um, I use tarps more than tents. And then this is already tied, so all I have to do is grab this end, which wraps around the tree first, and pull on it, and it'll un unfold itself. And then I keep a small roll of Mariner's bank line. Uh, the reason is, is because it's braided. It's number 36 bank line. It's braided. I can unbraid this and make multiple pieces of finer thread to repair gear with. I can also use this to tie things down with. I can also use this to bundle firewood with. I can also use this to tie pots over my campfire. Uh, there's a lot of different things I can use this for, even around the home. Um, a good, trustworthy compass. This is Sunto MC2. Um, this one is the um, this is the North American or the Northern Hemisphere compass. If you're going to be traveling the globe, uh, get the global lens attic compass. This one here is probably about forty-five dollars. I think the global lens attic is about eighty. Um, I don't care if you're military, law enforcement, or just average Joe. This is the compass that you want. It has a movable bezel ring that I can use. It has a magnifying lens that will start an ember in the sun. It has measurement markers for when I'm using maps and contour maps, and it has measurement markers on the side as well. It has um, a nice peep sight right in the middle so I can line up any landmark that I'm looking to navigate towards and I can see it very clearly. And it has a reflective mirror. You'll want to peel the plastic off there. A reflective mirror for signaling for if I have something that happened to my neck or something I can see or hard to reach places, a splinter, a tick, whatever it may be. Um, and also I can signal for help. If I get the sunlight right, I can signal for help. All right. And I keep this. What's nice about the, the base plate compass is I can lay that on a map and I can see through it. So my measure mar markers are here and I can see the location on the map and it makes it easier for me to read the map. All right. But um, this is probably the most reliable compass I've ever had in my life and I've never had it steer me wrong. Obviously with this you'll need the skills and knowledge to learn how to do basic na land navigation. All right. um, this is a small self-aid kit. I keep one on the outside of my pack. This has basics in it. It has ibuprofen, it has aspirin, it has Benadryl, it has a little um, bug bite stuff, and it has some bandages, regular bandages that you would use commonly. We're messing with knives and sharp tools and things. Um, it's nice to have that. Just reach in, grab it real quick, and I have it. Okay. The other thing I keep in my pack is Yuko Storm Candles. Uh, these burn, and they say eight hours, I'd say about three or four hours. Um, but primarily what I use these for is um, creating light around my, my camp, not to see from, but to make me feel better. Okay, and A lot of people don't think about those things. And when I say camp, it could be you had to leave your home and tent in the front yard for some reason. Okay, You got stuck in a snowstorm where there's a tree down on a major roadway and you're stuck there for a long time overnight and you have to set up a camp on the side of the road. It could be those kind of things. But what I like about this most is if I'm dealing with wet materials that I have to start fires with, um, I can light this with my lighter. So not using up all the fuel on my lighter, I can light this and it only takes a few seconds to get that lit. And then now I can use this candle as a resource to light that wet material because that flame will hold longer and I'm not using up the fuel in my lighter. So candles aren't just for lighting, they're also for starting fires in a very efficient way without using up your resources. All right. But mostly candles around camp or where you have to camp out is for your own personal, it makes you feel better. Okay. Um, cargo tape or duct tape or what I prefer is Gorilla Tape, it's stronger. Um, I don't just use this out there for repairing gear or making bandages or even making water containers from. I use this for things like if a window breaks, you can tape the glass back together with this. It's that kind of simple thing. So you want these on hand throughout your house where you know they're going to be and that's the most critical thing. The reason I keep a lot of these things in my pack is because I know where it's at. 
and I don't have to go digging around to find it, all right? Um, so having some kind of Tupperware container near your front door or something like that is even helpful for the in-home type of stuff. When you need to bug in, you can have those things on hand and you know exactly where they're at. Just regularly rotate and check your batteries. Um, sports stick sunscreen, something that's not going to squeeze out and leak in my bag, and um, a little bug spray, a little personal bug spray. All right. Um, this is a Shemog, any kind of cotton bandana. This one's about 36 by 36 inches. I want it as big as possible. Um, if you can get it in bright orange, even better, because then it can be an emergency panel. Um, I can use this to put over my water bottle. So if I'm getting water out of a creek, it'll keep the bigger particulates out of my bottle when I'm doing that. Um, I can use this, obviously, to wipe the sweat off. It's big enough to use as a sling if I need it. Um, it's big enough to filter water through. So make a cone out of it and filter water through to get particulates out of it if I'm doing a lot of water at once. Um, I can cut pieces off and make charred cloth from it. So next time I need to start a fire, I have something I can just set an ember on or strike an ember to and it'll, it'll get hot really quick and I can add that to my tinder bundle. So a lot of uses for a 36 by 36 inch. Um, you want 100% cotton um, simply because if we're gonna make char cloth from it, you need 100% cotton to do that kind of thing. Um, in my bag, I have a redundancy cutting tool, uh, probably a little bit more expensive than most of you would need. Same kind of edge on the blade. It's curved a little bit differently because I use this for skinning game and things like that. It's high carbon steel, so I can cast a spark from it, um, and it looks really cool, which I like. Um, but it goes right on my belt with a nice leather sheath. Um, and on the back of this, you can tape uh, some kind of thick, very thick sewing needle, something that you can repair all gear with, whether it be putting a needle through the rubber in your shoe and up through the leather to sew it because it came apart. You can use a piece of your bank line, untwine it, and then you can use your reamer, ream a hole in that rubber and in that leather, and you can use the canvas seal sewing needle that's on the back to actually sew that. Um, if you get a big tear in your bag or your gear, the bottom falls out, you can sew it up with that same material and the same tools. So I always keep those around. Um, in my bag is also another set of silverware, usually because I'm out with one of my kids. And I like to have, you know, a couple sets on me, basically, and they don't really cause any extra weight. Obviously, in your bag, you want three days of clothing. And when I say three days of clothing, I'm not talking about a bunch of jeans and stuff. I'm talking about uh, skivvies, underwear, t-shirts, um, socks, all right? Underwear, t-shirt, socks, because they can roll up and you can have one pair of underwear, t-shirt, socks rolled up about this big, not taking up much space in your bag, and you can have three of those, and that'll last you for 72 hours if you need it, all right? Um, one of the heaviest items I keep in my bag is a military-grade extra-large poncho. I'm not an extra-large person. I'm five foot nine, um, about 170 pounds, and I have this not just to keep me dry. It goes over my bag and everything, you know, I can use it for that, but this is an emergency tarp for me. Um, I can set this up, really really quick it has grommets on it so I can tie uh, cordage to it um, right on each corner and on the sides um, I can use this for water collection I can set it up on a funnel kind of method put my container on the end and if it's raining that water will go straight down into my container um, also this thing will hold up to anything but this is a military grade poncho don't be fooled don't be fooled by things on Amazon that say military poncho no you want an official U.S. military poncho. You get them from army surplus stores and things like that. You want an extra large. If you're bigger than extra large, fine. Get a 2, 3X. Extra large usually does the purpose that we need it to do. All right. So that's usually around, I think, a, a 5 by 6 type of shelter. Um, I keep an easy to deploy hammock in my bag. This is a Grand Trunk hammock. This one here is about $100. Um, it's camo, uh, so if I want to do some stealth camping or something like that, I can. It has an integrated bug net. A lot of people don't like those. I love those. Um, I bought some tree straps to put in here, so it's easy to loop it around the tree, hook it off real quick. I can stretch this thing tight, and I also have 50 feet of cordage in here, paracord, 550 paracord, um, in bright orange, because I don't want to trip or hang myself in the middle of the night over those things. I can use the cordage to run a ridge line to hang my tarp, I hang my hammock right underneath that. I have a shelter that doesn't weigh more than four or five pounds. All right, so I didn't need a tent or anything. One thing that I don't 
notice a lot of preppers telling you to carry, and that's a signal panel, an emergency signal panel. For you hikers and backpackers, you should always have one of these in your kit. Uh, this one's really big, as you can see. It has cordage tied to each corner. And what you use this for is if you go off trail, if you go off trail to get water, if you go off trail to take a pee, um, if you go off trail to pick berries, I don't care if you think you're only going to be gone for five minutes. One of the biggest reasons thousands of hikers go missing every year in the United States is because nobody can find them, but primarily it's because the hiker can't find their way back to the trail. Woods look different. The wilderness looks different when you walk off the trail. You can get turned around real easy. Without your proper navigation tools like pace count beads, a compass, your contour, uh, topographical maps, and a signal panel. This signal panel is so big when you hang it on the side of a trail and you walk away from that trail you can typically turn around and see it really quick. This has saved a lot of lives. Not to mention if you're really in trouble, if you're really in trouble and you need to set up your hammock and stuff off the trail um, because you broke your leg or whatever it may be, you need somebody to find you. Hang this between two trees next to the trail, put three big black X's using your cargo tape, and in the wilderness, that's a universal sign for SOS. I need help. Okay? So there'll be a big signal panel that you don't have to be signaling with your mirror or flashing a flashlight. If you pass out or whatever it may be, somebody sees that. They know what that means. The local park rangers and those type of folks know what that means. Not to mention, if you hung this on the roadside because you had a catastrophic uh, problem at your home, hang this on the roadside, put those big black X's on it, and when you call emergency assistance, say, uh, my mailbox is down, there's a big tree on top of it, uh, my house is on fire, but you can see a signal panel, a big orange signal panel at my driveway with three black X's on it, that's my driveway. You can let people know that. You can tell when you go camping, when you go hiking, whatever it may be, you can tell people, your loved ones, you leave an emergency plan with, this is where I'm going to be, this is my travel plan throughout, and if I'm in any trouble, look for the big orange signal panel that I hang in the trees, and that'll let you know where I'm at. But primarily, this is just for us to find our way around. It's something big, so if we need to wander around a bit to, to see what resources we can gather, whatever it may be, this is something that helps us find our way back to where we started, okay? Back to our camp or whatever it may be. Um, this is an emergency grabber blanket. This has a mylar coating inside. It has grommets on the corner, not the strongest in the world. Um, there are some better manufacturers out there about the same price, but this one I've always kept in my bag. Notice it's bright orange. What else can I do with this? Yep, I can put those big black axes on it, and if I need help, I can stretch this thing out. This is cover for me, especially in winter months, because I can have the mylar side in, so I can run a small ridge line, load to the ground, make a lean-to tent from it, the orange side out, mylar side towards my back, my fire two or three feet in front of me, and that fire will reflect heat off that mylar and keep me nice and warm. I was in a big storm hammock camping once, and it dropped to freezing temperatures all of a sudden, which we weren't expecting. And in the middle of the night, I got seriously, seriously cold. And I took this out, and I wrapped it around me, and I kept my mouth out of it so I didn't build up con condensation in it. This thing warmed me up. I took my phone to, to gauge the temperature. It went from 36 degrees to 70 degrees inside this thing to keep me warm. These are critically important. If it's really hot out and you're fatigued, you're exhausted from the heat and you need to sit and get water and cool down, you can have the mylar side pointing away from you towards the sun. You created shade, but it's also reflecting the sun away from you, and that'll help you regulate your core body temperature. Okay. There's a lot of uses for this thing. I teach a class on that. I always keep a write in the rain notebook in my pack. Uh, for one, it helps me write down my pace counts, my coordinates when I'm doing navigation. It helps me write down things I've found and where I found them at different coordinates using my compass. I can measure like the coordinates. Hey, there's a blueberry patch here. There's a water supply here, that kind of thing. I can write those things down. Most importantly, um, always bring a big carpenter's pencil or even uh, sharpie. I like a carpenter's pencil because I can sharpen it with my knife. Most importantly though, I can write notes on this. So if I need to travel, if I need to move, I can post notes along the way to let people know. Um, I'm going on this heading, this bearing. I've set an azimuth of this on my compass. 
I'll be there within, I left here at this time, I'm headed this direction on this bearing, you can find me there. This is critically important, people don't realize it. But keeping track of my navigation points, um, keeping uh, coordinates in here that I'm going to be using regularly, and if I practice an escape route from my home, or I practice a bug out route, um, I'm kind of likely write down all the coordinates in here. So I have an at a glance guide and I know exactly where to set my bearings and move in that direction if I'm on foot. All right. Like I said, two is one and one is none. This is my bigger self aid kit. They call them first aid kit. This is from Survive Wear. Um, they're about 35 bucks or so on Amazon. They sent this to me for review, and I didn't give it the most positive review. I gave it a subpar review. The bandages and the way everything's organized in here are really, really good. What wasn't good is what they called a tourniquet. The tourniquet is garbage. It wouldn't even be a good tourniquet for a child, okay? So I added a cat tourniquet in here. This is professional grade tourniquet. Obviously, don't use a tourniquet if you've never been trained to use one. You can damage somebody by doing that. Um, it has, uh, triangular bandages, an emergency solar blanket in here. It has uh, gauze, it has Q-tips, it has ACE bandages. It has a place for me to put personal or prescription medication, over-the-counter prescription. It has a resuscitation mask, CPR kit, an emergency whistle. This one I put in here, uh, it did not come with this kit. This has the P inside of it, it's like a stadium whistle. It's extremely loud and it's very distinctive. Um, it has shear scissors in here for cutting bandages and things like that. It has tweezers in here. Um, it has um, hypoallergenic tape in it. Um, I put another bug spray unit in here and I put a 2% tincture of iodine in here because I know how to use this to disinfect my water. This is my personal self-aid kit. I can use many things in here for other people though okay but this is primarily all of my both my kids and my wife will have one of these kits in their bag because this is our personal aid our self-aid kit all right orange bandana um, these aren't big enough and they're not 100 percent cotton but these ones here are the uh ust survival technology um, they have tips on them and stuff right so when i'm teaching kids i use one of these um, but it's bright once again, right? Um, I can use this to make char cloth. It's just not big enough. These things are the, the kind of Walmart things you find, the things you find on Amazon. You want bigger than that. I have a secondary poncho in here that's not quite as high. Uh, uh, it's not as thick as my other poncho. Uh, that's my regular poncho. I don't want to be wearing that big rubber blanket around all the time. That's for me to just slip on real quick, okay? And here, Stormproof matches and another lighter. Anywhere I can find to put fire, I put it. This blade, this uh, saw here in particular is Silky Gone Boy. Um, they're about $35. Um, razor sharp blade. Now this is Japanese, so it cuts on the pull, not on the push. So you got to be careful not to pinch this blade or it'll snap. Okay. But what's this good for? Well, cutting dry wood, cutting wood to make shelter, cutting pine boughs to make bedding, whatever it may be. Um, this is a heck of a lot safer and a heck of a lot faster than an axe. Um, if you don't have one of these in your gear, if I'm wearing cargo pants, it's right in my pocket. It's another thing that I carry on me. Um, you're missing out. So next is um, wherever I can, I fit little snacks, calories. I put calories in the bottom of my bag. All right. More fire, ferro rod which is not a fire steel, it's a ferro rod. It'll cast 3,000 degree sparks, which helps create fire really quick. More store-proof matches, Yuko brand. One of the most critical items in my kit that I probably use more than anything on a day-to-day -day basis, I carry a 64 ounce water bottle and a 48 ounce bush pot cup that has handles and a lid on it. It has holes in it where I can put a bale on it to hang it. I get this from Self-Reliance Outfitters. Um, this one's 64 ounces, this one's 48. Most people don't need this. You can get the 32 ounce, um, 32 ounce water bottle and the nesting cup that goes with it. I can cook my food in here. I can uh, disinfect water by boiling it in here and then transfer it to my bottle. I'm never gonna collect water in my bottle from a non-disinfected source like a creek or a stream or anything because now I'm contaminating my bottle. I'm gonna connect, collect it in this cup boil it over a fire because once it's boiling I know that it's disinfected it's killed all the the different things in it right and then 
Um, if there's any particulates running around, I'll just put my bandana right over top of my bottle and slowly, slowly pour this in so it gets out the bigger particulates. And now I have disinfected water. And once again, this is a single wall bottle, not insulated, so I can actually use this over the fire. You can see mine's blackened a bit. That's because I use it over the fire. It's usually blacker than that, but my wife tends to clean my stainless steel. But once again, uh, food grade stainless steel, it's bomb proof, it'll last for a long time, and you can get those on selfrelianceoutfitters.com. Okay? That's basically my typical kit that I carry with me. It covers shelter, it covers heat and disinfectant, using, making fire and using fire for different purposes. It covers cordage, it covers personal cover and self-aid, it covers repairing, it covers cooking, um, it covers the gambit of things. People will say, you know, well, well why do, what else do you keep in your bag? Well, typically, which I don't show on camera, I keep a wad of cash in my bag. Small bills, um, ones, fives, and tens. Usually about $500 worth. Why? Lucky go away. Because if power's down and I'm on the road, meaning I had to leave home for whatever reason, which is pretty rare, I'm going to try to stay on my own property as much as possible. But if I do have to leave home for some reason, I'm going to get fatigued. I'm going to get tired. And hey, Motel 8's not going to be taking customers with credit cards. But if you tell them you can give them 60 bucks in cash, they'll give you a room during a power outage. All right? If you say, hey, hey, I can give you 60 bucks in cash. I just need a bed to sleep in for the next eight hours. All right? They'll give you a room. They'll give you the room. All right? If you need to walk into a filling, if there's a local convenience store filling station, it's going to say cash only, right? You need to fill up on fuel, which is going to be hard to do during the power outage. But if you need to get water, you need to get food, calories, those types of things, they'll take it. You'll, they'll take you as a customer because you have cash, okay? So about $500 in cash, and that's hard for some people. They're like, I'm just going to put this 500 bucks in my bag and, and never touch it. Yes. Yes, all of your emergency bags should at least have $100 in it in small bills. That's critical, especially if you need to leave home. Okay? You don't want to be stuck in an emergency without. How about this? How about your, your power's down? Um, the banking system's down. You're meaning you can't go to an ATM or anything like that. The power comes back on. It's been really cold out. Your pipe's froze, and all of a sudden your hot water tank springs a leak out the bottom. It's about $250 for a new hot water tank. Uh, you couldn't go to an ATM. But you can, now you can call a plumber and say, hey, my hot water tank just sprung a leak. How much is that going to cost me? If you have at least $500 in cash, that'll probably cover it. All right? So it's things like that a lot of people don't think about on a regular basis. But this is my personal kit. There's the standards. The things I showed you is pretty standard to what you should have in your kit all of your kits all the time. This kit weighs about 30 pounds. So one thing I tell people is before they put these kits together is work out, get fit, make sure you can carry these things and make sure you can carry these things for long distances. You know, having extra pairs of socks and things is critically important. Having good, a good pair of boots that are comfortable, like Timberland hiking boots and things like that that are comfortable, is critically important. Changing your socks and being able to wash your feet, one thing I didn't show you is my hygiene kit, my uh, my personal uh, wipes, uh, which are like cleaning wipes. Uh, I call them big boy wipes, and hand sanitizers in my first aid kit. That's so I can clean my feet, so I can clean my hands when I'm eating and doing things. I don't want to infect myself with anything. All right, um, my feet are, are going to get sweaty. They're going to get wet. They're going. I'm going to get end up getting swamp footed if I'm not careful. I want to make sure that I can clean and disinfect my feet. That's a high fungus area, okay? You can get a lot of bacteria in your shoes. I want to make sure I can keep my feet healthy, all right? Because you can't travel if you can't walk, all right? So these things are kind of like my personal kit. Every vehicle I have has this personal kit in it, except for some additions like ramen noodle. Um, just add water type food. Things I can boil water, add the water, it's good. Things I can crack open real quick like a bag of chips and some fruit snacks. Um, things like if you like milk, if you like um, milk in your coffee and things like that. I tell people all the time, 
even at home, don't store canned milk because it'll go bad. Store powdered milk, right? Powdered milk, if you, you mix up this kind of powdered milk because this is 100% milk, if you mix this up, this tastes just like regular milk, okay? Um, and you'll be surprised during a power outage how many things you need to cook with milk <laughs> if you never made a lot of uh, just add water type foods like noodles and things like that before macaroni and cheese those types of things so milk is is it's important plus it gives you the right nutrients and calories that you need when you're out and about um, at home we're going to talk about some other things that you're going to need later on uh, for right now I think this is enough um, I will say that this kit all in all, I didn't buy it all at once. These are things I get over time. I replace. I, you know, I regularly check, and if I use something in my first aid kit, I immediately replace it as soon as I can. I write myself a note, put it in my pocket, so when I, you know, take my wallet out of my pocket, it's right there on my wallet, like a post-it note. And I'm at the store, and it says uh, buy new, you know, knuckle bandages or whatever, and I'll grab a box while I'm there. So I'm regularly replacing these things, regularly checking the expiration dates on food and things like that. Um, checking my gear for any holes, rips, tears, anything that might be weak where I have to replace that gear. And I want to make sure all the time that this bag has all those things in it. Like I said, it's not a light kit. It, it'll be about 25 to 30 pounds all said and done. Um, and I just keep it in a very simple two layer backpack. Um, a lot of times I carry a bucket style pack. It's just a great big open pocket and everything goes in there. I like this because it's in layers. I like to compartmentalize things. Um, but it's also a $90 backpack that I got at a sporting goods store uh, with Molly webbing on the outside so I can actually attach things that have Molly attachments onto the outside of my pack if I need to, if I want extra gear on there. All right, but this is kind of like my basic kit. This is basic to me. I would feel really, really just not okay if I didn't carry my basic kit. This takes an emergency situation and turns it into inconvenient camping for me. All right, um, but if you see me once I set all this stuff up, and I'll do a video on that type of thing, um, I, I don't feel inconvenienced by it at all. It actually, it's very romantic. It's very nice, and you can have a, a lovely time. And I have kids, and they don't get freaked out. They're like, oh, we're going camping with that if there's a long-term power outage. No, kids, <laughs> it's an emergency. But my kids don't freak out because they're used to setting this stuff up and using these things all the time. And they're used to that because we practice with it in a very fun way. Um, one last thing I'll add to this. Folks, this is not going to stay charged forever. Sure, sure you can carry a personal charger with you, uh, but you guys know as well as I do, cell towers go down, cell signals go down, and batteries go dead. All right? Um, at the end of the day, a good two-way radio that you can replace the batteries in is a good idea. You can learn, listen to emergency weather or emergency responders channels, things like that. But also, keep something in there to entertain yourself, a personal item that's going to keep you entertained, a book, like a real one, made of paper and stuff. Um, maybe a small travel board game or Connect Four or something like that in those little travel packs, something that's really light that'll slide into your bag really easily. Um, a deck of cards. That's why the military give cards to their troops, because it, it gives them the sense of comfort, it gives them the sense of entertainment, it keeps them, their minds busy. What makes people make critical mistakes during these situations is they don't keep their minds busy. That's what happens. That's why people tend to make mistakes that can get them hurt or dead. Um, people might say, well, Bob, this is, looks like a wilderness camping type thing. It can be used for that. It can also be used for urban survival. It can also be used if you need to bug out your current location or you just need to get out of your house and help's not coming and you're going to be outside for a little bit. This will help you be okay with that, okay? So if you're displaced, this will help. I think that our government in the United States should give every homeless person in America this, this kit because they know how to use it, okay? This is the type of things that homeless people do carry with them. They know how to use these things. There's a reason for that, all right? So I just want you to kind of get a feel for how this all works. I teach classes on these topics, but just by what I went over in this video, that'll help you put the kit together. You just got to learn how to use the things in the kit so you're not out there when you need it and you're like, I don't know how to use this stuff. Well, then you're screwed. Okay? So this is one of my, for, you know, a few folks asked me about how do I prepare for emergencies and things. Here's one big step that I think is the first most critical step. 
Uh, we talked about in a previous video about gathering water if you know power outages coming and things like that. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about certain things you need to, you seriously need to prep in your home for the regular occurrences like power outages, storms, those types of things. When you need to bunker down, but you're going to be without certain amenities and resources. We're going to talk about power supplies. We're going to talk about emergency water. We're going to even talk about how to use the bathroom because a lot of you will find there's no water pressure when the power is out, right? People don't think about those things. Uh, we're going to talk about those things, staying safe and secure within the home. But right now, this is if you need to leave the home or you just need to step outside of your home to get out of a dangerous situation, maybe a gas leak or whatever it may be, and you're going to be displaced and you can't travel to a place to stay. You don't have friends and family or a hotel you can get to, but you can at least post camp in your yard and you'll be fine, okay? So this is probably the most critical emergency kit. I say this is your self-reliant kit. If you don't have this, you're, you're 30 steps behind people that know what they're doing. All right, take care.